Hi, I'm Jamie Peters. I'm a registered nurse and certified respiratory educator at the Lung Association of Saskatchewan. We're here today to talk about asthma in school and how it affects your students' performance and quality of life, as well as what you can do to help out during an asthma episode. So what's asthma? It's a serious lung disease that is chronic, is variable, and may have recurring symptoms. It can be life-threatening and can develop at any age. It's not a contagious disease, so if you happen to hear a child with asthma in your class coughing, it may be asthma and not necessarily a cold. A cough is not normal and should be reported to the parents. Asthma cannot be cured, but it can be controlled. Asthma is the most common chronic childhood disease and is a major cause of missed school days. There's about 35,000 children in Saskatchewan that have asthma. This means that on average, or in an average classroom in our province, there may be at least two children who have asthma. Kids who don't have their asthma under control may be up at night coughing, may not be able to exercise, may need to use their rescue inhaler frequently. This in turn can cause a variety of problems at school. So why do teachers need to know about asthma? Because students who have good control of their asthma miss fewer days of school, can exercise and play with their friends, and have better concentration, therefore making them better learners. When asthma worsens, several things happen. The airways become swollen, the muscles around the airways tighten, and mucus increases, causing air to go, less air to go in and out of the lungs. The typical symptoms of asthma are cough, wheeze, chest tightness, and shortness of breath. So this is what you might see or observe when asthma is worsening. You may hear a student having more cough, you may hear a wheeze, which is a whistling sound during breathing. You also may notice that the child is restless, irritable, or tired. Here's an example of an asthma episode. So as you saw in the video, this boy became short of breath, was wheezing, he had to stop exercising, and he couldn't keep up with his friend. So we'll talk about the ways to control these symptoms and prevent them from occurring. About 60% of people do not have control of their asthma, which increases the likelihood of an asthma emergency. So it's important to understand what this might look like. In an emergency asthma situation, you may see the student have more severe cough and difficulty breathing, resulting in an inability to speak many words between breaths or finish full sentences. The student's lips may look a bit blue and they may be using their whole upper body to breathe. The rescue inhaler may not have worked and the student may be feeling anxious, confused, or tired. So what can you do to help the students breathing in an asthma episode or emergency? Well, let's go over the first aid right now. We want to get the child to stop all activity and assume a seated, upright position to help open up the airways. Reassure the student that you are there to help and speak calmly. Ask the student if the rescue medication is available and where it is located. Hopefully it's nearby in a pocket, backpack, locker, or desk. For this reason, it's important to know your school's medication storage policy and your student's asthma management plan. Assist and remind the student to use their medication and then notify the proper person according to your school policy. The students may be required to take one or more puffs of their medication at this time. Do not leave the student alone at any time. If symptoms do not improve within 10 minutes, Follow your school's policy and child's asthma management plan for the next steps. This could range from calling the parent to calling 911. Now there are a couple different uh, asthma medications we'll talk about and they are controllers and relievers. Controllers are usually inhalers that are taken every day on a regular basis to prevent and treat inflammation. These are slow acting and take hours to weeks to work. You probably won't see these in your classroom but they are very critical in preventing asthma episodes. They usually come in an orange, red, brown, or purple color. Relievers are the rescue medications and usually come in blue devices. They provide quick relief of asthma symptoms by loosening up the tightened muscles of the airway. These medications work immediately, but full effect takes up to 15 to 20 minutes. These are the medications you will most likely see students using at school. Proper inhaler use is important for you to know to ensure your student is getting the most out of the medication they are using. If you need to guide your student through taking medication during an asthma episode, it is critical that you understand how to use the different inhalers. 
Please watch the following demonstrations to get a better understanding of this. Channing, do you have your inhaler? Good, okay, I want you to take off the cap. Good, shake the inhaler. Tilt your head back and exhale. Bring the inhaler to your mouth and then press down while breathing in quickly and deeply. Good, and hold your breath for ten, five to 10 seconds. Great, exhale, great job. Many students won't use or carry a spacer device with their inhaler, but the Lung Association recommends that anyone who is prescribed an MDI inhaler or puffer should use a spacer chamber with their inhaler. Hi Shani, do you have your inhaler with you? Okay, you're going to take the cap off your inhaler and off the spacer. All right, shake the inhaler. All right, place the inhaler at the back of the chamber. Tilt your head backwards. Exhale. Put the chamber in your mouth. Press the inhaler. Breathe in slow and deep. Take out, and I'm going to count 10 seconds. Exhale, good job. It's important to wait 30 seconds between each puff of medication to have another dose. This helps the can to repressurize. Spacers come either with a mouthpiece or mask. School-aged children should be able to use a spacer with a mouthpiece. Here is a demonstration of the discus inhaler. Hey Channing, do you have an inhaler with you? Yes, can you open that up for me? Now press the lever down till we hear the click. Tilt your head, breathe out, take the inhaler to your mouth, take a deep breath in, hold your breath till I count to 10. One, two, three. Now breathe out, close the inhaler, good job. And here is a demonstration of the turbuhaler. Hi Shannon, do you have inhaler with you? Would you like me to walk you through how to use it? Would you like to take off the cap? Perfect. Then you twist it back and forth till you hear a click. Good. Could you exhale for me? Now you take the inhaler close to your mouth and tilt your head backward. And take a deep breath. Perfect. Hold it right there till I count 10. One. Perfect. Exhale. Good job. So what triggers asthma to flare up? First of all, a trigger is something that makes asthma worse by irritating the airways. Avoiding triggers can help control asthma, decrease symptoms, and decrease medication use. Triggers are different for every child, but 90% of asthma episodes in children are triggered by a cold. This is another reason to have good hand cleaning hygiene in the classroom. Some other examples of asthma triggers are exercise, cold air, grain dust, emotions like laughing or crying, as well as animals and pollens. What can you do to make your classroom more asthma friendly? You can reduce clutter and dust, you can avoid classroom pets, especially fur or feathered pets. Report any mold or leaks to the necessary people. Use low odor classroom supplies, especially markers, which can be very strongly scented. Avoid the use of perfumes, air fresheners, and strongly scented cleaning products. It's important to also try to use unscented personal care items, such as deodorant and hairspray. Scented products can make breathing very difficult for some students with asthma. As I said in a previous slide, exercise can be a trigger for some students who have asthma. Here are some tips for you to help a student participate and play with their peers. Always allow for a good warm-up and cool-down before any physical activity. 
Do not have the student exercise if asthma symptoms are present, and then follow the first aid guidelines to help with symptoms that do occur. A student who experiences asthma symptoms during exercise may return to participate if their symptoms improve after using a rescue inhaler. It's also a good idea to monitor the student's use of inhalers and inform the parents. Asthma can impact the type of educational activities you plan for your class. You may want to avoid field trips that include exposure to animals or grain dust. Different weather as well as high levels of dust and pollen can also impact how a child does in outdoor activities. So keep this in mind if a student of yours struggles with asthma. It's important to know your school policy and ensure there is one in place regarding medication use. The provincial regulations from the Teachers Federation of Saskatchewan can be found directly on their website. Teachers are under no legal, ethical, or moral obligation to administer medications. If a child is in need of emergency medication, a teacher has a duty to assist the student to the best of their ability and a duty to behave as a reasonably prudent parent would by seeking and or obtaining medical help as quick as possible. It's important to become informed about asthma to know what makes asthma worse, how you can identify it, and help your students. To keep your students safe, ensure asthma medication is easily and always accessible in school, as well as while away on field trips. Knowing what to do in an asthma episode and knowing the management plan is helpful to prevent emergency situations. So just to repeat, learning more to help your students with asthma, recognizing their symptoms, and when they might be struggling, will help them miss fewer days of school, have an improved quality of life, enjoy school and be better learners. Thank you for learning a bit more about how to manage asthma in your students. There is much more to learn, so please contact the Lung Association to speak with a certified respiratory educator. We provide resources and presentations for all age groups and are the leaders in lung health education across the province.